Hello and welcome back to the Reboot. Today we're in the mission editor for DCS World and we're looking at creating trigger zones. So to allow the missions to be dynamic in DCS World, we have a logic trigger system that we can use. So as an example, if a blue unit went in a certain location, then something would happen. An explosion would go off or some red MIGs would spawn in or something like that. Now we're going to look at the logic side of it in another video, the triggers if you like. Today we're just looking at setting the geographic trigger zone. So we've got this guy down here we're going to use, which is create trigger zone. We can create as many of these as we like and we're going to go and find so which we'll create it. Down here we'll do, we've got a left click to place and here we can configure it. First of all it needs a name and a suitable name because in the big mission you're probably going to have lots of triggers that you're going to be choosing from. So in this case I'm going to call it start mission and in this trigger what's going to happen is if a blue unit comes within this circle here then that's the trigger to actually start the dynamic part of the mission to make the enemies start spawning in to make you know whatever counters and flags and stuff I need to enable so the first thing that we can change is the radius the radius is measured in feet from the center of the circle to the outside now feet is kind of annoying to work with we really want to work with nautical miles because we're talking about big spaces so we just need to remember that one nautical mile is about 6,000 feet so if I made that 6,000 then it's going to make the radius one mile and the total diameter of the circle about two miles let's double check that with the ruler here yeah just under two miles so that's that if we ever come out of it like this and we need to get back into the options just click in the center next we can change the display colors and you'll probably want to do this if you've got 20 30 triggers you'll want to change them to different colors otherwise it's going to get really confusing so you've got the rgb you can change here or you can just select a color like i prefer to so that nice blue there and you can change the opacity i don't know why you'd really want to but you could so if you want it to make it very opaque you could change it to 250 but you should really just leave it where it is because you will want to have units inside this you, that you want to play with. Next, you can hide it like you can hide just about everything on the mission editor. So we hide it like that. And if we go off there, so it's still there, but it's just not viewable. And if you think, oop, I suddenly want to get that back, we can go to the triggers list here. Click on that, the trigger zone list. You say it's still there and we want to untick hidden. And then we've got it back there. So that leaves just this table down here. Now, we're not sure what it actually does. I've never used it before. Presumably, it's for if you're doing kind of outside external scripting. If it's a complicated mission, that's, that's way above what us guys can do. But out of interest, you can add what we think are probably variables. That is a variable. So we could call that cats variable and have some sort of value. Cats variable become, becomes one or something. And you can delete that. But um, if you are a better mission editor than me, which is very likely, please let us know what that table does. And that's it. That's all there is to creating trigger zones. You can have lots of them. You can have them overlapping with each other. You can have them any size. So you can have a trigger zone, for instance, that's literally as big as the map. I often do that. Or tiny ones like 90 feet across if you need to. Okay, that's all I've got to say. I hope that helps and see you later.